Hello Cherry Dairies, welcome back to the channel. If you join us for the first time, you're welcome. Thanks for joining the family. Please welcome. make it official, you know, by just clicking the subscribe button below and also like and share with friends because we discuss edifying stuff here. Mm -hmm. So thank you for coming in. And I am Debbie. So it may is <laughs> Drum roll. Graced Rhapsodies. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. Um she writes and posts different things and all of them are edifying. So you can see write-ups, you can see songs and inspirational talks and all of that, you know, all that jazz. So I'm going to leave a link to her YouTube channel in the, in the description box and probably also leave a link to her website. She has a website. Can you imagine? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you can follow that also. You get to fill yourself in and feed also. So thanks for joining me on the channel today. It's a pleasure. I might be an official. She's my friend, Sha. But I just have to be official, you know. Today we're going to be talking about, already by title, I know that you already know we're talking about how far is too far. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So the main discussion is how far is too far with the opposite sex? Relationship wise, if you're actually in a relationship, like relationship, you know, in that time we'll talk about it. And then if you're just normal relationship, friends, colleagues, whatever it is, how far is too far? Considering physical contact, how far is too far? Considering what you want to accept from them, what you want to tolerate from them. Yeah, conversation and what you want to give to them back, how far is too far? Because um, there's very this okay. They say that where there is no law, there is no sin. Mm -hmm. So you really don't know if anything's going wrong. At least officially, should I say, or in a way, if you haven't set boundaries for yourself, if you don't have principles, if you haven't discussed these things with yourself first. Okay, yeah. how far mm -hmm. do I want exactly? Like how far do I want to go on this issue? on that issue so relationships are relationships you get we're going to have relationships with people because we're humans and we are social beings so but our relationships are not the same you know like it's not we don't have the same we don't set the same boundaries for different relationship mm -hmm. shapes we don't go the same length in different yeah. relationships you know there are relationships where we know okay this is the borderline this is the um, this way we're going to put a stop to this thing and then the other relationship, oh, we can tolerate more and order, depending on where you are in a relationship with the person and what mm -hmm. kind of relationship it is. Yes. So, if we understand this, it helps our relationships with people. What do you think about even the theme, like some form of introduction? What is it to you? When you mm -hmm. say how far is to fall? Like? I think um, regardless of, you know, what, well, like you said, there are various forms of relationships. Mm -hmm. You determine how people treat you mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. it's friendship whether it's um, you know romantic wise you set the pace for how people will treat you mm -hmm. so whatever relationship it is you have to know what you tolerate mm -hmm. what you allow mm -hmm. how far you can go with this person and how you treat that person as well mm -hmm. because it all matters in the end when these um, should I say um, in the standards I will call it mm -hmm. when they are overlooked, mm -hmm. they have their consequences which mm -hmm. are not nice or they are not good. So mm -hmm. we have to put these different things into play and consider them and you know work in accordance to them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Before we get any in deep into the conversation, so let's just say what a prayer. Any prayer for us? I do for them heavenly thank you for today. Thank you for this topic we're about to go into, we ask the Lord you will minister to and through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, expose unto us wisdom, knowledge, and help us to to be better people in the way we treat you and in the way we treat others in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alright, so um, back into the conversation. We're talking about how far is too far. Um, I think just while she was praying, something dropped on my mind that the Bible says we should love our neighbors, right? We should love ourselves. And then we're in church today, we're learning like you have to love God. I feel like that's like the basis of everything. It starts from your love for God. Your okay. love for God, like it kind of, it's like a stream that overflows into every other area of your life. It overflows into your relationship, interpersonal relationship with other people. You get... And if the love you have for God or your love for God 
and your fear for God controls you, it's going to control every other thing around you. It's going to control right. your relationship with other people. And because you love God, it will affect the way you um, relate with other people. You're going to love other people too because that's His commandment and He helps you do that. And in that um, action of loving other people, you're going to have a healthy relationship with people. Just as you excuse me, put God first. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, I don't know if you spoke about everything you want to speak, speak about for the introduction, but mm -hmm. you did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, now we're going to talk, how, where's the starting point with your interpersonal relationship? Because let's say, let's talk about it. If you don't set boundaries, sometimes you don't even know what you want to tolerate or what you, you don't want to. Right. And we're talking about physical contact. Sometimes you're, for instance, you're friends with a guy and then you guys have been like friends and there's nothing wrong and all of that. And maybe one day he begins to touch you in places you're not comfortable with and you're like, okay, what's up? If you don't have the boundaries, sometimes you may tend to, okay, maybe it's just me being like overreacting. Maybe he doesn't mean mm -hmm. something or he means something or whatever it is. But I feel like once you have defined stuff, you already have your principles. Mm -hmm. It helps you for that in relationship, not just romantic, with your relationship with other people. It helps you. I think it was Prince George. I used to read his books like... Um, I was blessed to have the opportunity to read his books like when I was a teenager and one of his books he said um, define your relationship I think it was in one of his books I read about define your relationships like when you have a relationship with someone aside maybe colleagues or even in, um, in uh, your workplace or in school or wherever you are in church you know your relationship okay this is a, a professional relationship or this is a student relationship and all that but put a tag on your relationships don't leave your relationship tagless if you know, okay, this is my classmate, mm -hmm. I know that almost everything else I am doing has to, with that person, has to be stopped at the classmate level. Yes. If it exceeds the classmate level, then that's because I've allowed it, and maybe I want something more, maybe I won't have something more to give to that person. Mm -hmm. If the person is a friend, you know, oh, we are friends, and that's where it stops. Mm -hmm. It's not everything I do with my friend. Yeah. It's not everything I discuss with my friend. When it's opposite, now we're talking about opposite sex. It's not every, of course, thing you, thing you want to. If you know yeah. that there's nothing more you want, there's no other string you want attached to that relationship. Yeah. So even though later things may change and then the relationship may change, you may get maybe more romantically involved as we believe God will allow it if that's what it, um, what it is for you. But then at that point, what you know, what you understand at that point, you should make sure you keep that tag on the relationship and stick to it. Mm -hmm. As Christians, and of course we're talking about Christians here, as Christians or people of principles, you have to have that principle to guide you. Don't go through life without principles. You get, you have to, if you have a relationship and you're defining your relationship, you're like, okay, you don't even have to tell the person necessarily, if it's not like a relationship, relationship, like, mm -hmm. and I mean relationship, relationship, that's like, you're not into, a, you're not caught in, you're not into a romantic relationship that's like tag and official. If it's like just a normal um, casual relationship with this person as a lady so i'm talking about ladies and it still applies to the guys also like define how far is how far am i willing to go with this person like mm -hmm. how far do i want to give or how much do i want to give in this relationship what part of me do i want to give you know yeah. into this relationship it's not every bit yeah. of you want to point to relationship if it doesn't apply if that bit of you is not for that relationship we get you don't want to, you don't want to I don't know. I'm I'm not sure the right word. Emotional circle. Like of course you can give emotional circle or like comfort to your friend, but there are ways you don't want to give emotional circle if the person is not your spouse. Mm -hmm. You get there are ways maybe for instance if your friend, oh how I'm there for you and all of that. I am I'm supporting you in this and all that. But when it comes to like your spouse, of course you're gonna give everything you've got, your body, mind, soul, everything into it. As necessary or as required mm -hmm. so I feel like when you um, define your relationship when you put a tag on your relationship it helps you better it makes yes. you also have a direction you're not yes. just being told maybe you have a lot of for instance you're a lady you have a lot of male friends and then this one comes take from you that mm -hmm. one comes take from you that one comes take yeah. from you and all that and all that and then by the end you're left empty you know without nothing to give to the person that really should be receiving True. that part of you True. yeah so, and it's not just about your body or sexual intimacy or whatever. Sometimes it's your emotions because there's something about, I don't know, yeah, emotional attachment. That's yeah. another thing. And I think it happens a lot amongst 
friends, when we say we are friends, I'm just friends with this brother, I'm just mm-hmm. friends with this sister. If you don't yeah. put a boundary to it, you don't know how much you're giving in. It's later right. you realize that you've been so emotionally attached to this person. And unfortunately, maybe that's not your spouse. You don't end up together. It takes a lot to now detach, to yeah. now break those bonds you have so formed, nice. especially with your emotions. And it's really terrible because sometimes you have um, spouses or a couple, a couple, they are married. But maybe the sister also still has a friend, a male friend outside. And because she's used to telling all her problems to him. Yeah. And he comforts and all that. Instead of her now talking with her husband, she's trying to go to the male friend to talk mm-hmm. to him. Okay, this is the issue I have, <clears throat> excuse me, with my husband, that kind of thing. And it's not it's not a wise thing to do. Definitely. It can also be the same thing with the sister or sorry, the brother. He may be very close to his sister and because the sister understands and that's what your friend, you have an understanding and your spouse is here, your wife, so you to kind of build an understanding with this spouse. You go out, yeah, else. you go out to your female friend and you're trying to talk to her, oh, this is what my spouse did and then that emotional attachment is still there and your spouse here is being deprived of the emotional comfort, of the emotional you know, connection she needs or he needs in the uh, family. And you're never able to build something up you get. So it puts a strain on the relationship. Mm-hmm. And before you know what's happening next, there's physical connection also because True. those things are linked. It always starts. Yeah. So, so if we put a boundary, we know, hey, I don't want to give this part of my mind or this part of me so, to this, so yeah, exactly, myself to this person. If I know that we're not having something like concrete past friendship, like I don't want to have this tie. Yeah. If it's a guy to a guy, a girl to a guy, I think that's the understanding where you're able to work it out. But when it's a guy to a lady, mm-hmm. that physical connection comes and then it becomes an issue. You begin to compare your spouse to... Your friend outside. Oh, when I yeah. talk to maybe Messi or something, she understands me. Of course, she understands me because people have been friends for a long time. Maybe even childhood exactly. friends. She understands you. But your spouse, you're just meeting. You can't have that connection because part of you is still outside. You get, and it's like, oh, I'm not cheating. Okay, I even read a post recently. They call the emotional adultery. Like mm. physically, you're not cheating, but your heart is yeah. outside already, and it only takes a matter of time. Yeah. The person may also take your whole being, your whole um, body, your, your, your person also, mm-hmm. and it's going to go. So I feel like if we can start from the, the word go, like from the beginning, we ask, okay, of course you greet someone in church, that's just normal. And all. But when you see you begin to get close to this guy or this girl, yeah. it's wise on your, on your part, you put a definition, okay, what is, and it still goes back personal, it still goes back to your relationship with God. As a person, that's what I do. I go back and pray, Lord, who is this person to me? Like, what's the purpose this person has in my life at this time? Also, also some people are not there to stay forever. Mm-hmm. Sometimes some people are just there for a period of time because they have a purpose. God has sent yeah. them for or or a sent, Yeah, or has sent you also for a purpose or a season in their lives. And if at that point you get to lose and give something else you're not supposed to give yeah. at that point, then it's going to be like huge mess. So if at the beginning we're able to define our relationships like, okay, this is how far I want to go. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. When it comes to physical contact, when it comes to emotional contact, like, okay, I don't want to share this part of me because I know this is very important. If I share this part of me, it's like I'm giving a part of myself to this person. And if I know that I don't want anything beyond maybe what it should be right now, Mm -hmm. then I don't want to give this part of my person Mm -hmm. to this other fellow. So yeah, I think this is just like a round of summary, but mm-hmm. then I'm going to give her name is actually Peace, you know. <laughs> but then she's she's the CEO of Grace Rhapsodies. She's the brain behind Grace Rhapsodies. Mm-hmm. Rhapsody yes, rather. Lord. So yeah, so then what do you want to say? Like what else you want to add something? Mm-hmm. First of all, I would like to say, um, just add a little bit to what you said about defining relationships, whether it's friendship, classmates, mm-hmm. romantic and then you know there's a term now situationships <laughs> it kind of reminds me of something i had told you know i spoken with you earlier if it's um situationships i usually know what it's it's mm-hmm. kind of like when you think maybe the person is interested but not really you don't mm-hmm. really know where you stand usually they are not what it in the end mm-hmm. so save yourself the stress like um it's either this person is a friend or you know a, you, you're in a relationship with that person so there's no in between yeah so um 
apart from that, I wanted to say that you should know yourself. Mm -hmm. Some people say platonic, they can have platonic friendship mm -hmm. and it works for them. You know when you spend that amount of time or you have, you share certain details with someone of the opposite sex, mm -hmm. something is probably bound to happen. Then you don't dare yourself and go down that line. People mm -hmm. are different. Mm -hmm. Someone may have that wonderful rapport mm -hmm. with, you know, the, the opposite sex. And then it works great for them. They really mm -hmm. have no interest outside mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But if you try that and you say, oh, of course, you can't just set yourself up. That's literally what it is. Mm -hmm. So I think knowing yourself and actually defining your friendships, mm -hmm. sorry, your relationships, mm -hmm. whatever the sense may be, is very important. That's um, yeah, pretty much what I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thanks about that. Really, that's just the the main deal about it. the definition of relationship is the first thing. Oh, I feel um, like. What's comfortable um, for you may not be that same definition for someone else. Mm -hmm. So whether someone else thinks, oh, this is absurd or not, whatever, you're not comfortable with something, speak out about it. Mm -hmm. Everybody is different. Somebody maybe hugs you in a certain way, you're not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Speak out about it because mm -hmm. it always starts from somewhere. And I find that sometimes the truth is some brothers are really testing you. Mm -hmm. It starts stage by stage. Mm -hmm. Today you're tolerating this one. Tomorrow you will come with another one. And slowly it's like a toad being cooked with slow, mm -hmm. with cold water mm -hmm. from the start. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're not comfortable with and your spirit is kind of prodding you. Mm -hmm best to speak out about it and not in like be very firm mm -hmm. with what you tolerate and what you don't don't let anybody tell you oh you're just overreacting mm -hmm. i get mad when i hear those lines <laughs> like i will tolerate what i will tolerate mm -hmm. i will not tolerate what i will not tolerate mm -hmm. so you're not the one who has to define what i'm okay with exactly. basically preach, preach, preach. yeah that's it mm -hmm. all right thanks, thanks for that so yeah, from the first point we've talked about defining relationships, and the next point I feel like we're going to talk about, like, as much as you define, then setting boundaries. Boundaries are important, just like we mentioned before. If there's no law, there's no sin, and I feel like so we're going to talk about this boundary thing in two perspective. Um, boundaries as friends or just casual, like your acquaintance or whatever it is, colleague or whatever. And then boundaries if you're actually in a relationship with someone. Because, of course, we're trying to also talk about mm -hmm. ways to please God. In everything we do, we're trying to um, see ways to please God. To do as He has commanded us. Because He's the author of relationship, actually. In the beginning, when Adam um, was created, when God created um, heaven and earth, and then He put Adam in the garden. Mm -hmm. The truth is that when he says it's not good for a man to be alone, it's not just about intimacy or, or and all that. It was about the companionship. It was kind of a saying that, hey, man is made a social being. It's not good for a man to be alone. Like, physically, you can't go through life alone. You need someone. So whether that person comes as a friend at a stage of your life, or comes as a parent at a stage of your life, or comes as a spouse at another stage of your life, you need someone because that's how God has created it. So mm -hmm. Eve at that time kind of filled in all the places for Adam and even also vice versa. You get in companionship yeah. and in like you're yeah, relating with him. <laughs> so I, I, I can't remember who. I think it was the preacher, it was the, the preacher I was listening to and then he was like, um, if Eve did not come, I guess um, Adam would have started talking to the animals. <laughs> and then his head would have... <laughs> That would have done a lot would have been missing all the, yeah. you get that kind of thing. But anyways, yeah, God knew that it wasn't just for procreation, it was for companionship. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not good for man to be right. right.